Hey everybody. Well, uh, yesterday I did a video on the YouTube bullet train responding to uh, my friend Tremult about um, his uh, comment regarding uh, curry. <laughs> there was a funny story about, uh, about well I made a video about curry, this kind of, I have to explain how this goes and then we'll get into it. Um, uh, I made a video about curry in Japan and Tremolt made a video uh, or a comment about how the origins of curry uh, began in Japan, began with uh, uh, American sailors arriving in Japan and, and showing the Japanese the curry that they had made of their stew. So really what you have, and he said really what you had in, in Japanese curry is, a, is basically a stew with uh, curry chunks added into it. And I responded back that, well, my wife's mother, I explained that to my wife, and my wife said, yeah, my grandmother, she said her grandmother used to make uh, that same thing, when she'd make a stew at night, and then if there was any left over, she'd add some curry in the morning and make a, uh, some curry powder and make curry. Basically an exact, uh, basically a representation in the current behavior of the Japanese of the origins of how Japanese um, curry came about. Fascinating, and then at the end of the video, I, 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 miss, I misspoke and I said that uh, oncology. Re, re, I, I mentioned a theory where it called sometimes called oncology re, re, recapitulates phylogeny, and I said it wrong. It's not it's not oncology. It's ontogeny. I had to write it on my hand. I couldn't remember how to say it. <laughs> and the, the the proper theory is ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny, sometimes called the recapitulation theory. And this was a theory, and let, let's get into it. This was a theory uh, started uh, over a hundred years ago in support of the theory of evolution and, and used by some to try and uh, offer uh, uh, different ideas about how, how creatures, how species evolved. But let's talk about why, why uh, species evolution is like uh, making curry or like the Japanese curry. Okay, now basically the, the idea is that ontogeny is the, is, the, um, is the examination of the development of a fetus and uh, phylogeny is the progression of a species um, over time through evolution. And it was noted um, sometime after Darwin uh, created his uh, theory of evolution, it was noted that, that in, uh, in fetuses the Embryonic development goes, seems to go through stages which resemble in some ways the development, the larger development of that particular species uh, through time. And there's some interesting examples that, that illustrate this. And there's been a lot of controversy about this theory, but it, in, in the end, in modern times, it's basically wound up with some curious uh, uh, examples that are worth, are worth talking about. And um, there's some examples of that will show how that worked. For one, uh, take a look at the uh, backbone. Um, one of the distinguishing characteristics of vertebrates, well, the, di the distinguishing characteristic of vertebrates, creatures with backbone, is the existence of the backbone. If you look in a vertebrate uh, species, if you look at the embryonic development of vertebrate creatures, you'll see that the um, appearance of the backbone, and as the fetus is developing, the appearance of the backbone is indeed one of the earliest stages that happens in all vertebrate, in all vertebrate species. Kind of showing how uh, the vertebrate backbone uh, was in one of our earliest ancestors and that trait, that development of it, occurs early on in the development of the fetus. Uh, in contrast to that is the development of the large brain in humans. These, this large brain, brain was a latter, was, a, was a, a late development and in the em development of the em human embryo it appears very late in the development of the human embryo. So we have an example of an early, an early trait appearing early on in the development and a later trait appearing later on. Some other curious examples exist uh, that, that help to, to show this. Another is the, um, um, is the fact that uh, babies, basically human babies, will have uh, gills at an early stage. That's right, so if you look at a, a fetus early enough, you'll see that it actually has, um, on either side what re of, its, uh, of its body here, what resemble a gill slit, possibly uh, a remnant of our fishy past. Tails are another example. You know, humans are thought to evolve from, uh, from, from species similar to chimpanzees, although not chimpanzees themselves. Chimpanzees are, are their own unique animal. They are evolved from that same species. And we, our common ancestors had tails. And indeed, early on in the human uh, fetus development, we have, we have little tails, tails, um, tail bits there. Um, whales have, uh, whales are, uh, whales are descended from, uh, descended from uh, land ant mammals. And uh, if you look closely at the development of a whale, in, in a, an adult whale body, you'll find little remnants of their leg bones in their, in their, their, back, their back hind limbs in, in their body. You'll also find uh, uh, in the development of the fetus little fingers in a whale that then become vestigial. 
Uh, fish have a, a swim bladder that allows them to uh, maintain buoyancy. Uh, it's, it's, a little, it's like a little air bag inside or gas bag inside their bodies. And it was originally thought that the swim bladder was derived from a, 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 a basically a segment of the gut in early fish species. And if you look at the um, development of fish embryos, you'll see indeed that their swim bladder, which is a separate unit of the, or, or a separate organ, indeed stems off from the fish's, uh, from the fish's uh, digestive system, just as we would have expected it to see. It's interesting how tracing back bits of bits of the uh, um, looking at the development of an embryo can give us clues as to how a species evolved. Another example is um, uh, birds. Birds, the, the limbs, the four limbs of, of birds actually have fingers at one point uh, they, they, in the embryotic stage, which uh, then then develop into the into the wings, as you see. Birds also have um, uh, you you can invoke a chicken to grow teeth. Teeth, now chickens don't have teeth, and we don't see teeth in their embryonic stage. But they were, they were evolved from creatures. Uh, you know, basically they're, they're basically they're living dinosaurs. Is that what a chicken is? It's a, it's, a, it's a walking dinosaur. Back there was a time in the past when chicken, the ancestor of chickens, had uh, had teeth. And even though we never see the teeth in their embryonic development, if we the, the gene for the expression of teeth exists, and in, in the laboratory it has been demonstrated that we, it's been able to turn that gene on and cause a chicken to grow teeth. So chickens with teeth. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a curious, curious thing that the, that the legacy of our biological past uh, exists in our genome. For the most part, nature has a way of weeding stuff that it really doesn't eat out over time. But what's even more curious still is that we can actually visit and, vi and view the evidence of our past evolutionary stages by watching the development of the embryo of any particular animal. And with that, I'll, I'll then find, conclude with my comparison then with, the, with curry, just as the story of my wife saying how her mother, her grandmother would make, uh, would make, would make curry from stew illustrates how the arrival of, uh, of Japanese curry on the shores of Japan in the middle of the uh, 19th century. I, l I love this kind of stuff. When, uh, when, uh, when nature throws up the clues and the evidence, if we're uh, only willing to look and to, uh, to, to give it the proper consideration. So there you go. On oncogeny recapitulates phylogeny, the theory of recapitulation in uh, biology. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.